before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Help me share your love and grace in all I do. Lord, I come before you with contrite heart. Humbly I surrender all that I am. I want to learn from you. Please draw me close to you. Help me share your love and grace in all I do. Shine a light to a darkened world And always live the truth in every way May your love for me be seen by everyone And lead others to trust and love you more discussing a very very interesting topic but before i tell you the topic 
I want to remind you that you need to like and share the page because we'll be having an exciting time here. There are a lot of things to experience and we do not want you to experience it by yourself, but we want your friends, your families uh, to be involved <coughs> and to share in the blessing that we have for you this evening. Uh, so this evening we'll be discussing the church and the objective for this evening as we, as we discuss the church is what's the theory, uh, the theories of the nature of the church and what's the objective of the church? You know, there are many people who go into, who are going to um, church, I would say, um, business for different um, objectives and so on. But this evening, as we discuss the church, we will look at the, the, the biblical nature and theories that make up the church or, or constitute what is a church and the objective, what a church should be established for. So this evening will be very interesting because um, there are a lot of people who have a lot of things to say about church and what it entails. Sometimes some of the greatest discussion that happens around church is by the rum shop. Sometimes you're passing or you're going to the shop to get something and you hear a lot of discussion about church and church and church. So this evening you have an opportunity to give your input in what you think the church is and how the church should be impacting the world and, and all those different things. So before we continue, we would like to pray. At this point, I'll ask Pastor Peter to pray for us. Shall we bow our heads? Almighty God, we thank you so much for your goodness towards us. Lord, as we're about to discuss your business here this evening, we trust everything into your care and keeping. And bless, O oh God, this program tonight we ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. All right. And um, we will be having a really, really good time here. So we have some special guests tonight, but I will introduce them to you a little later on. So at this, this point in time, we will take in our, <coughs> our request, our hymn request, as we sing and give thanks unto the Lord. Amen. All right. So Sister Wanet, you will go the first one. You will say the name of the hymn. Okay. So... Nakoya, no, Nakoya, Grimes, Nayoka, sorry. Okay. All right, then. Grimes, mm -hmm. number 15. Sorry if I butchered your name, Nakoya. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> Sabbath to all, and she also is requesting 384. Mm -hmm. Happy Sabbath to you, Sister Antonia, and also Ulysia Hamilton. Happy Sabbath to all, especially Sister Mabel Mongin, my sister in New York. Be blessed. Happy Sabbath to you, my friend. Um, all right, beauties. Philip beauty saying mm -hmm. happy Sabbath. Katia Nash saying happy Sabbath, everyone. Karen, your job. <coughs> Pastor John saying happy Sabbath to the saints. Thanks for the link. All right, um, all right, Vicky Kito saying happy Sabbath from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. All right, so we'll continue singing now. Our next hymn, <coughs> Antonia Philip, 384. Now our blessings see waiting in his courts today. 
accidents and so many violence happening today it's a blessing when you can say safely through Amen. another week Amen. god has brought us on our way all right we now have another request sister monica uh rachel jero and beauty philip both of them want four three four hymn number four three four four three four
you should really come to Jesus, all right? Amen. So we have another request from Sister Francesca. <coughs> Poppy. Him one eight one. Does Jesus care? No. Does Jesus care? Francesca Perpy, happy Sabbath. Sister Rosalind Jeffers McCoy, how was your day? <laughs> so Sister Francis is asking Sister Rosalind how are, how is she doing? Sister Rosalind, we hope that you had a great day and you're enjoying the Sabbath rest. Sally Mars Marsat. Maras. Maras, sorry, happy she says good night, my two pastors. So I'll say good night to you, Sister <laughs> Sally, also happy Sabbath. Um Nikisha Douglas, all the way from Trinidad. She's saying happy Sabbath to all. All right. <coughs> Yvette Leslie is saying happy Sabbath family. Luem is saying happy Sabbath to everyone. Telson Sandy is saying, hey doc. Hi Telson, <laughs> happy Sabbath. <laughs> sure, sure I'll take good care, care of them, them. don't worry. <laughs> Okay, right. We recognize this one already. Pastor Mario is saying happy Sabbath to everyone. Happy Sabbath, Bishop. All right. Nessa Mimi is saying good evening, everyone. Happy Sabbath. And Gertrude is saying good night and happy Sabbath, one and all. All right. So we go back to continue singing and praising the Lord together. Lovely Philip would like us to sing hymn number 254. <clears throat> and in this world today with so many sickness, so mm. many different strands of sicknesses, we must have a, a, the great physician mm. close to us. And that great physician is no other than Jesus. The great physician knows me. Jesus, he speaks a truth, bring hearts to Jesus. 
my life, joy and my song, by day and by night, He leads me along. The Lord is my light, my joy and my song, by day and by night, He leads me along. All right, and our final hymn will be hymn number 532 by Sister Paris. All the way from Barbados. All right, so we'll sing five, <coughs> three, two. Day by day. Mm -hmm. And we'll sing the entire song. church and as uh, I mentioned earlier we'll discuss what is the objective of the church to investigate some of the theories of the nature of the church and to present a biblical model for God's church so this is what we are discovering tonight but before we continue we'll have special music and when we return I'll introduce the panel to you and we'll get down in some, into some serious discussion so now enjoy the special music you're going through when you've done all you can you're exhausted my friend and there's nothing else you can do when life overpowers you or someone betrays you you feel like nobody cares there's still one place I know when there's no place to go Listen 
He welcomes my pleas because he cares about me. He won't overlook my petition. He's standing above and is watching in love. He's waiting my burdens to bear. He's got time for you and a place for me too. I can go to the master in special persons with us tonight. I want to introduce the panel and as, as I point to them from my extreme right, come over to my immediate um, right, they will introduce themselves. So at my extreme right, Pastor Peter. Uh, Marlon Peter is the pastor of the Southeastern District, which includes the churches Man Mount, Koshu, West Island, and St. David. Happy Sabbath to the folks there. All right. Hi, happy Sabbath. I am Wanda Johnson, a member of the Grand Mall Seventy Adventist <coughs> Church. Happy Sabbath to you all. All right, so Wanda, welcome. As I'm Pastor Oliver Scott. I serve as the Executive Secretary of Grenada Conference of SDA, Prime Ministries, and Communication Director. It's a wonderful privilege to be with you today. All right, and um, I am your host, Pastor Lambert Paul. I'm the pastor of the Western One District, which is. Um, Close here, Loreto, Mongrambi, and Florida. And um, tonight we're discussing the church. And that's why you might wonder why there are so many pastors here. Um, because, you know, pastors is alive to churches. So we'll see um, as we dig deep into finding the biblical model for God's church. You know, we expect to get some deep stuff from the pastors who are present here with us this evening. All right, I want you to feel free to send in your feedback based on the question that I asked the panel. You can write your comments and we will, we will um, make reference to it. Um, before we continue, let's just take some of the greetings. Um, we have Delian Cam Cameron is saying happy Sabbath to all. Pastor Peters. Pastor Philip is saying, <laughs> Bishop Peters, I'm not hearing you sing. <laughs> all right. Okay, Sister Paris says happy Sabbath. <coughs> Kenny Sia King says, hey, hey, 
Watch my pastor. Happy Sabbath, Pastor Peters. Yes, I'm very All right. I say, Pastor Paul, you're not left out. <laughs> All right. Okay. Malinda Bryan. Happy Sabbath, Pastor Lambert. All right. Brother, sister from Mali. Oh, that's his, that's one of the con the island in um, Colombia. Okay. Yeah, that one of the island in Colombia, Providence. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go down the road. Pastor Scott, can you assist us now with some of the greetings? Well, I'm seeing Pastor Philip again. The two pastors can do a duet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Who else do we have there? Um, Rosalind Felix is saying good night. Happy Sabbath. We have Alan Hosford. Happy Sabbath, church family <coughs> from cold New York. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> Antonia Philip. Oh, yes, I can go to the master. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, Shema Hamlet. Um, hello, Brother Ham Hamlet. He's saying happy Sabbath to us. Mm -hmm. Alright, and the comedian on the song, wonderful singing. Alright, I can go to the master. Alright. He's Lan Henry. Alright, he's Lan Henry, Henry saying good singing. Mm -hmm. Alright. Barbara St. Louis, she says amen. He hear and answer our prayer. <coughs> and I'll see you in the morning, Sister St. Louis. <laughs> Kelvin Lewis, hello, good night. Nikisha Douglas, she's saying greetings. But that's me, Pastor Scott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Pastor Paul. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Okay. Good night, Hislin. <laughs> Alright, so we, we will get on into the um into the discussion now. Um, I will recognize your greetings. Well now you can respond to some of the questions that we'll be asking. So the first question we're asking tonight, what is a church? Just what is a church? Well, the word church um, mm -hmm. comes from the, the Greek word ecclesia, mm -hmm. compound word, which means called out, mm -hmm. called out. So the concept of church has to do with God calling us out of darkness into his light, and he assembles us with other like believers. And uh, so that's the church. Okay. Is that all it? Um, my understanding of the church, mm -hmm. not as um, profound as Dr. Pastor Scott, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, I understand it to be a community of God's believers, mm -hmm. um, God's people, and definitely if we were a community of God's people living in this world, we would be separate and distinct from those who are not part okay. of his kingdom. So it does, uh, um, just a slight difference to Bishop Scott, which is almost on the same line, but Ecclesia comes from Ecclon and it simply refers to the gathering. So when we speak church, we're speaking about assembly, gathering, call at once. All right. I just want to go a little deeper mm -hmm. before we go to the text here. Pastor Scott mentioned that um, we are called out from darkness to light <coughs> together with the rest of the light believers. Could you, could you make that a little simpler for, for, for us, please, and for the viewers? Yes. Well, the church has, has a spiritual concept, mm -hmm. of course, when it comes to Christianity. So all of us as human beings, we were born... You know, with that tendency towards sin, we are, mm -hmm. we are lost without Christ. Mm -hmm. But Christ loves us so much, God loves us so much, that he provides grace that we can be saved. And so he calls everyone, not just a special group of persons, but everyone to come out of spiritual darkness. But those who make a choice mm -hmm. to accept Christ, um, all of these believers combine to form his church. Okay. All right. So thank you for the for the explanation because this is important because I know a lot of people don't have the concept as clear as, as they should. Um, but there is there is an addition to the question that says explain the theological meaning of Peter and Rock in Matthew six eighteen and let let let's let's read that Matthew <coughs> chapter sixteen and verse eighteen. Can somebody read that for us? Someone can you read it for us? Matthew yeah Matthew sixteen and verse eighteen. <coughs> Okay, this is a, a text that is used by a lot of churches and you have different theological meanings from different people, different churches, and there are so many churches and sometimes it's one little doctrine and somebody decides to knock up some galvanize and say I start in a church. <laughs> Alright? So Matthew 6, 18. 16. Matthew 16, sorry. Yeah. Matthew 16 and verse 18. Alright, it says, 
And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades or hell shall not prevail against it. All right. So explain the theological meaning. What, what, what with Peter and the rock and so on, because sometimes um, you hear different theories and people say that um, Christ built the church upon, upon Peter. You know, so Peter has the key for the church and a lot of different things. So can can you all explain what what really what the text is actually saying to us here tonight? If I, if I, to look at the theological significance of the church is to really actually look at the text in itself at its depth. Um, Jesus asked the question, "Who do men say that I am?" Peter answered, "Say, I believe that thou art Christ." Mm -hmm. So Peter is saying, Peter said, "Jesus, I know that you are Christ." And Jesus is now saying, "Peter, Peter." Simon, Bedrona, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Or if you look at the Greek uh, uh, etymological study of the, the word Peter, which is Petros, it simply means a little rolling stone, mm -hmm. a pebble, a rolling stone, and a rock here is Petra, mm -hmm. which is an unmovable rock, unmovable something. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is, I, I, do, I, I, I try not to read into the text to state that Jesus is um, using the two words to bring about a wordplay, but um. To pull out a theological significance from the text simply says a lot to me that Peter, the foundation of the church cannot be based on the merit of Peter simply because Peter is insufficient. Mm -hmm. It must be on the merit of something that is immovable. And why Peter is insufficient? Because we see Peter denied Christ after the car pro three times. True. The church cannot build on somebody who is moving mm -hmm. and shakeable. The church must build, have, have its solid foundation upon an, an, an immovable source. And that is Jesus himself, because even when he went to Hades, the, the grave, he had power over the grave, which means that he is immovable, and nothing cannot hold him down. And um, there are three schools of thoughts as it relates to that very same text. Mm -hmm. Hence the reason why it is so significant. Some persons believe that the church was established upon Peter. Mm -hmm. They believe that Peter was the first pope. True. Some believe, yeah, some, some, some believe that the church was established upon Jesus. And there are some persons who say that Jesus gave Peter the keys mm -hmm. for the church. Mm -hmm. And, um, but the text is very clear. And even further, Jesus said, Peter, um, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. And if flesh and blood did not reveal it to Peter, it must be some supremacy, some supreme power, which is to say that the church cannot be on the merit of Peter, but something greater to Peter. Sure. All right. Pastor Scott? <clears throat> yes. Well, of course, the, the background again, as Pastor Peter's indicated, uh, Jesus Christ is really affirming the confession of faith. Right. Um, that Peter made, um, that he's Christ, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, 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 and shows that Jesus Christ is, is the one who gives salvation. And, uh, and so Jesus Christ, in verse 18, is affirming Peter's right. confession of faith. And so the, the, the main subject of, of what is being discussed is really Christ. And so the reference cannot be to Peter, it has to be to Christ, because right. the question was, who do men say that I am? It is about Christ. And then Christ asks um, to disciples, who do you say that I am? So the emphasis is on Christ. So therefore, when Jesus speaks about the rock, it has to be about him because throughout the conversation, it is about him. Sure. Um, and additionally, one of the um, best ways we can realize that Jesus Christ is a rock that is being spoken of is in the is in what the disciples say about Jesus Christ, and uh, we nowhere in the Bible do we see the disciples referring to Peter as the rock in terms of that church, right? As as a matter of fact, Peter himself understood who the rock is, yes, because right. in Acts chapter four, mm -hmm. um, verses eight to, to twelve, um, Peter sp spoke there. And Peter refers in verse 11 to Christ, saying, This is a stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Uh -huh. So Peter himself understood that a rock is not himself, but a rock is Jesus Christ. Sure. And then in Matthew chapter 21, verse 42, Jesus Christ, um, prior to that, told a, a parable um, of men who would have been involved in, in rejecting him. That was the point. And so Jesus Christ asked, haven't you heard that it was written that the stone which the builders rejected have become the chief cornerstone? And so therefore, we understand from the Bible, Christ's confession of himself, Peter's confession of Christ, 
that the rock is, is, is Christ. As a matter of fact, in the, in the Old Testament, we find that the rock is being referred to as God. To, to God. Um, just let, let me give you one more text. Um, right, wh Sam, wh while you're finding the text, let's take that comment. Just go back up. All right, go a little higher up. I saw something about visible and invisible. Yeah, church was right. Both visible and invisible. Okay, um, Pastor, Pastor Philip is saying the church is both visible and invisible, mm -hmm. both body of believers. Continue, let's go down. All right, so we're asking a question, what is the church? So you can feel free to share your comment. All right, Dr. Philip is saying, someone can you read this for us? The early church was the way before they were called Christians. This suggests that at its base, sorry, this suggests that at its basic form, the church was designed to point men to the way, which is Christ Jesus. Okay, All right. Yes, so Psalm 95 verse 1, O come let us sing unto the Lord, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> Christ is the rock. Right. Just right. to, uh, before, you, before you continue, let me, share, let me share your text. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 1 to 4. All right? It says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and mm -hmm. all passed through the sea. Verse 2 said, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And verse 3 said, And did all eat the same spiritual meat? And verse 4 said, And did all drink the same spiritual drink? Mm -hmm. And they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Amen. So I'm happy Amen. that you brought that point because I think, um, I don't know, for maybe many persons, when they think of the church, they think of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. But as we said earlier, the church basically is God's call out. People are the call out to the community <coughs> of believers. So the church existed long before God, before Jesus asked Peter this question, even before Peter existed himself. So for the church to be built on Peter or established on, on Peter, when it existed long before Peter was. So, Sister Wanet, just, mm -hmm. just continue there. We're going there next. That's the next okay. question. Mm -hmm. Where we all started. Mm -hmm. How can you trace the origin of the church through the scripture? And just, right. just a right. comment on, um, on the Peter and, and, and rock issue. Now, remember, Jesus was not just speaking with Peter. He was speaking to the disciples. So, they were there. Peter was speaking on behalf of the disciples. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was speaking to all of them. Now, if the church was built on the promise of Peter, why then in John they are arguing who should be the greatest if Jesus would have already told Peter that you are in charge, I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. After that, they are still arguing who should be the greatest amongst us. So it was never about Peter, but it was about Christ. True. All right, so someone let you, you finish? Yes, I'm finished. Okay, I'll good. keep my point before we get to the next right, question. Okay, good. <laughs> right. So the next question, all right, let's just take the comment. Right. Pastor Scott, read this comment for me, by Graceland. Graceland, we should remember that Peter had denied Christ, mm -hmm. and now he is here confessing who the Christ is. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. Let's go down. You have more comment there? We have Mabel. Okay. Um, it's not relating to the text, but she's saying a very pleasant and happy Sabbath, family and friends. All right. Okay. So we're going to the next question. Tonight we are discussing the church. So I just want to encourage you to share and like the page because the discussion is very interesting because you see there are a lot, a lot of churches out here, you know. Um, sometimes we get confused with church and religion, all right? But um, re Christianity is a religion, and there are plenty, over thousands of thousands of different denominations. And everybody pull out a church and they say, that's my church, and we have the true church. But we're looking at the biblical concept, and we wanted to put text out to validate your comments, because at the end of it is not what I prefer and what you prefer, but what the Bible says, right? So we want to encourage you to like the page, share the page, and... And, and get involved in the discussion. The question on the floor right now, what is a church? So in your mind, uh, in your understanding, what is a church? You can share it with us. We will read it out and everyone will um, know what you said and you will, we will acknowledge it as well. So we're going to the second question. It's very interesting because some people church start yesterday, some will start tomorrow, some mm -hmm. will start by December, and some starting next year. Right? Mm -hmm. And everybody who comes on, on the scene with a church says, my church is a true church. Mm -hmm. Right? So the question is, therefore, is the church a man-made institution or can we find its origin in the Bible? Well, question on the floor. Well, I think we can go back to the, to the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. um, for example, Adam and Eve, they were God's people. <coughs> um, then we find that 
the descendants of Seth were, were faithful, referred to the sons of God. Mm -hmm. And we find also that in Genesis chapter 6, um, Noah is being referred to as having found grace in the sight of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, by the time we get to chapter 7 verse 1, he's called righteous. And of course, we know that God was calling the people out mm -hmm. to be in the ark. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and then those who were in the act, they were the ones that were called out, who accepted because there's always choice. Mm -hmm. You have to choose to be part of the church. Of course. And, uh, and um, so they became the church. Of course, God would have called out later on in Genesis 12, um, Abraham and his family, and they became the ancestry of, of, of the, the church in terms mm -hmm. of the Old Testament church. Right. All right, and the children of, of Israel. Right, so we have the Old Testament church, and I'm going to give way so that maybe uh, my my colleagues can speak to the, the church in the New Testament. All right, so let, let's let's take um, Chanel's comment. <coughs> she said, "Good night from Brooklyn. Always nice to be tuned in. The church is not a building; mm -hmm. it's the people that makes the church." My opinion. All right, Joel is saying, "Good. God always has His group or His church." who remain faithful to him. All right, so so as, as we, were, we were listening, Pastor Scott was setting a baseline. He was setting a trend um, throughout history and, and, and the movements of God's people, and you stopped at Abraham. Yes. Right. So, so I'm Sorry. going to wait to my colleagues now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sister, when do you know? Uh, right, so we know, basically, as Pastor Scott left off, um, he said that Abraham basically gave rise to <coughs> the, the church in the New Testament. And as we know, um, Abraham eventually had a son by the name of Isaac, who then um, further then went on to have um, Isaac. Then went on to have the twins, um, Ishmael and Jacob. Am I right? Yes, Ishmael and Jacob. And it was Jacob who was named Israel, and then that gave birth to what is known as the children of Israel. Esau and Esau Jacob, Jacob, sorry, yeah. sorry, Esau and Esau. Jacob, and then they get born to what's called the children of Israel, and we know <laughs> that eventually they went into Egypt, and again, God called them out of Egypt, um, and they had Moses leading them, and eventually the children of Israel went back and forth <clears throat> in terms of disobeying God, and time and time again, he kept calling them out from sin, calling them out from sin over and over again, and he promised them that he will send the Messiah, who would be uh, their savior. And in the, in the New Testament, Jesus, Jesus <coughs> spoke to the uh, Pharisees, and he told them, like, all these things that happened in the Old Testament, they were basically pointing to me, which brings us back to Jesus being the foundation or the rock that the church is built upon. Uh, that, if, I, if I'm going to just... Well, I don't want to follow the chronological order yeah, yeah. to the establishment of the church, but what I, all I want to say is that from Genesis, as Ella Scott would have mentioned, come right down to the end, we see that the structure is there. And um, the church going through the different dispensation, God always have a people that he's calling out. Yes. That he's calling out. And we see that right through. That's the trend right through, throughout Christendom. And um, in the New Testament, we find Christ um, calling his first disciples. That's right. Calling them. Mm -hmm. Right, calling them out, and uh, and of course choice again, mm -hmm. right? And um, we find that apart from the twelve disciples, he called out others who became part of the seventy, mm -hmm. and they, but they are called out <coughs> to assemble, and then go out again to be used as agents for the calling, calling more and more persons. So we find the church is growing. You have the hundred and twenty um, in the upper room, the of Pentecost, and then of course the church has has multiplied. Um, throughout the centuries and it continues to exist to our times mm -hmm. and the Bible speaks you know I guess we'll go there but it speaks to the remnant church mm -hmm. so so God's church is growing because God's church is called out not to be idle but called out to assemble and then go out to be used as agents for the salvation of souls all right so we're going back let's take some comments go up a little right um, right so we're looking at a trend for the church here Dr. Philip again is saying the church is identified not by a gene generic name, but by its teaching. The message the church bears makes it the church. All right, Brother Joel is saying, well said, Ms. Johnson. And even today, amid so many religions, 
and say God is still calling out his faithful people. Uh, I'll comment on that in a while. Um, Sister Peter is saying, who can we classify as God's called the people? We have a question like that, so we'll answer it there. Um, and Richard Nichols. Sister, a question like that as well. uh, do you think people from other churches will be saved like than who go to the C churches? <laughs> C churches? <laughs> Affiliates there you wanted to put. Oh, okay. Right, okay, good. So we're moving on. Um, this is a very important trend because I think today the dilemma that we are in or the confusion that we are in today is because of a, a period, I don't think they, they, they plan to go in that trend, but just to touch it a little, through the period of the Dark Ages, mm -hmm. where the church gets a little blurry. And, and sometimes when people, I encounter people and they want to know, well, you know, they believe that their church is the true church. And then sometimes when you bring them to Revelation chapter 8 and you show them the different horses, and the era in which the church went through, you realize that the church lost its identity there. Yeah. And that's when the Reformation come in and we are where we are today. All right, so a lot of people just grab something and they say, well, I don't think your church just teach that, so that is, a, that is the true church. But Pastor um, Philip made a very important point that the teaching of the church is what defines the church. All right, the teaching defines the church. All right, so we'll, we'll get a little deeper into that. Will all church going Christian go to heaven or only those who go to a special church? What are you thinking? Ronald, Ronald Richardson, sister, want to read that for us, please? So after Christ went back to heaven, what happened to the church? All right, we will talk, we will talk to you <coughs> just now. So we'll answer your question shortly, Ronald. Mm -hmm. So the question is to heaven. Of course, the church refers to the people, but oftentimes in our speaking, we also refers to persons you know, going to church. Mm -hmm. So the, the reality is that one can, can go to church or attend and be part of the assembly, but but you have to live your life in harmony with the teachings mm -hmm. of the God of the church. Mm -hmm. You accept Christ, you're justified by faith, and you live a life that of faithfulness to God. And so, and so not being a, mem being a member of the church doesn't guarantee a place in God's kingdom. Okay. You have to be an authentic child of God by being a true believer. Mm -hmm. If you're not a believer, then you cannot be saved. So if you're a believer, and a believer is going to be faithful, um, then God is going to, to, to usher you into his kingdom. Okay. Anybody else want to respond? Well, the Bible tells us that this God has provided the Spirit. So after Jesus went back to heaven, he allowed the Comforter to be with us, the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. and he said that his Spirit will guide us into all truth. And oftentimes I meet people from, you know, different churches, so to speak, um, different congregations, I should say, and um, different walks of life, and they ask a similar question, do I have to go or assemble at a sp specific place to be saved? But I think once, if God calls us out, meaning out of the kingdom of darkness, and we move out of that kingdom of darkness and allow him to guide us into his truth, well, then we will be saved. Oftentimes, I think um, salvation is tied to the building or your membership in terms of your name on the church books. But as we said earlier, um, the church is not necessarily the building, but it's those who are called out and who accept that call and allow themselves to be guided wherever the Holy Spirit uh, takes them. And once we allow that, the Spirit will certainly guide us to salvation. All right, I just want to share a text from Matthew chapter 7. And from verse 21, it says, are you just verse 21? He said, Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. But So a lot of people just go to church and um, they call on the name of God and they think that they will be saved. And even, I, I prefer the one even in the one in Luke. The one in Luke seems a little irritated when it says, when, when God says, um, Jesus says in verse 40, um, Luke 6, 46, Why calling me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I say? It's like your child keep asking you for something, and I tell you what you wear, and you're not doing it, but why you keep asking me for something, right? So um, I like to say it like that, that there will not be any rat pass to heaven. So God will just give you a pass to go to heaven because he likes you or because of your complexion or your status in society. But you have to be according to his will because you can be joined to a church that teaches all what the Bible um, um, says, how it relates to salvation and doctrines and so on. And the church teaches, but if you don't follow it, you're still lost. 
right? So it comes down to an individual matter yeah. as well. Yes. And, and on, on that basis, yeah, if, the, if the pastor Scott. All right, so th there's an additional point that I, that I wish to make because mm -hmm. um, Pastor Paul, you made reference to the Dark Ages, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So you have the, the in history, you have the church being corrupt, corrupted. Mm -hmm. So the reality is, is that the so-called church, you know, has, has departed from the ideal will of God, the teachings of, of God. Mm -hmm. so, in, so the question that relates to being part of a specific church becomes very relevant. Um, it, it means, therefore, that, that God's true church, God's authentic church, cannot be a professed group of believers that do not teach the word of God, mm -hmm. but have to be a professed group of believers that are faithful to the word of God. Mm -hmm. So the Bible says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no light in them. In them, and so therefore, it becomes relevant that that we look for a church whose teachings are harmony with the word of God. Okay. All right, good. Let's take some comments from viewers. Let's go back up. I saw some higher up before you read this one. Go up, go up, go up. All right. So after Christ, you're okay, all right? You guys are all right. Yes, other people will be saved from other religion. The church is the individual. All right. Let's go. Um, Natonia, she is saying, Happy Sabbath to all and to Pastor Scott. I would love to thank you for answering the call mm -hmm. to ministry because for years I was searching for the true church and at a crusade at Samaritan. You planted the seed and the spirit worked. I give my life to God. But you don't stop there. You continue to encourage me in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Thanks once again. This year would make me 10 years Amen. as Amen. Amen. I never regret my decision. Continue to encourage others in the Lord. Good Amen. night, Natonia. Keep Amen. faithful to the Lord. Amen. Do you think people from other churches will be saved who don't Amen. keep the Sabbath? All right. Can you give the difference between the true church and the false church? All right. We're just reading somebody comments. We will respond to some of them. But Dr. Philip is saying he's responding to those. Tanya. He says those that obedient to the light sent, sent to them by God. Let's go. Trisha Joseph, Pastor Vitas, Trisha Jones, Pastor, please. Making yeah. it to God's kingdom depends on your belief in all what God stands for. The relationship we have with him and how you live the life he expects you to. Church can't save anyone and not only Adventists would be saved. All right. That's the last comment. Right. So we have a lot of questions shooting at us there. I wanted to make reference to the one I think that... My wife asked, and I, I think she asked it for a particular reason. Mm -hmm. um, if, if the motivation for gaining salvation is attending church, then it diminishes the power of Christ in, in, in the whole Christian episode. Um, salvation is on the merit of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And therefore, even today, when you ask some persons out there, um, you hear some persons saying, I know I'm going to heaven. Why are you saying that you're going to heaven? Because I just go to church. Mm -hmm. um, is salvation just by the, the normal ritual uh, as it relates to attending church on Sabbath or attending church on Sunday? If we gain salvation, so then Jesus, the name Jesus is in trouble. Sure. Mm -hmm. It must be on the merit of Christ. And as Ella Philip would have stated earlier, um, firstly, we were called the way, mm -hmm. which was responsible for pointing mm -hmm. others mm -hmm. to the way. Now, we Ecclesia, we were called out. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, perfect example with the twelve. He called them out and he, he taught them. He, he Engrave his word within them and then he exp tell them go and explode, cause an explosion in the community. We have a responsibility as individuals that when Jesus calls us, we must first be obedient to the light that he would have granted unto us. Hence the reason why they had us to let down a lot of stuff that they used to do and follow Jesus. All right, and um, we need to understand the, the basic in, in coming to know Christ. And um, this is very important because sometimes even um, we as Seventh-day Adventists sometimes, we get confused with the idea that because I go to church on Saturday, I'm, I'm saved. You know, and somebody who goes to church on Sunday, they are lost. And this is something very dangerous because the Bible says, as you, you mentioned, that in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, 8 to 10, it says, verse 8 says, For you are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. So that's all what it takes to save us. That's However, right. in verse 10 it says that we are workmanship. On, uh, so as a result of being saved, you need to work up to a standard not to be saved, but now that you say people should see it differently, it means, therefore, that a transformation should take place. Because you cannot be a saved drunkard. 
You save, but you was a drunkard. If you if you are saved drunkard, then you're not saved. When you save, transformation takes place. Mm -hmm. And that's why even um, it speaks about growing in grace. So when you are saved, as truth come to you, as more knowledge come to you about Christ and his expectation from you, then you, you make adjustments in your life. So you don't just come and you accept Jesus and everything gets perfect. No, it's about growth. So even though you are in a Seventh-day Adventist church or you go to church on Sunday and you met Jesus Christ and you're really in love with him, as he continues to show you different things in your life and different adjustments to make, you need to make it as you get closer and closer to him. All right? Anybody want to make any comment before we move on? Yeah, so in terms of, of persons who will be saved, going to church as against um, belonging to a specific church, the reality is that those who are justified by faith and have been faithful to God will be saved when Jesus returns. Of course. Mm -hmm. All right. Somebody asked a question there. They asked, um, what is the difference between the true church and the false church? We just want to share, I'll just share one text with you. And this is the text in Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17. And we will, we will just share that text. Revelation 12, 17 is a text that is well known among Seventh-day Adventists. I want to read it. Revelation 12 and verse 17 says, that the, And the dragon was wrought with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. And as you look at it there, we've already the last two parts. The dragon we know is the devil. The woman, as you read higher up, you see the woman was about to give birth and then she went into the wilderness and hide for a period of time. So it's not Mary, but it is the church. And this was, this was mentioned earlier, was the Dark Ages. All right? And um, it says, And the dragon was wrought with her, upset her, mad her, angry with her. And he went to make war with the remnant of her seed and to devour why is his fight against the, the last or remaining of, of the church. And this is the mark, the Bible says, that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So this is what um, highlights the true church. So if you are part of the true church, or if you are part of God's church, then the church of God should keep the commandments of God, not to, not to be saved, but because you are saved, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. All right? And some people might, you know, sometimes when commandments are mentioned, people get a lot of, they get irritated, some people get defensive. Let me just tell you this. I see Christ and commandments. Christ is the water in the face basin. The commandment is the mirror over the face basin. You look in the face basin, your face is dirty. That's the commandment. You, the water is there, you turn on the tap, you wash your face, and you move on. Without the mirror, you wouldn't know your condition. If you mash up, if you mash up the mirror, you throw it away, then you'll just live your life anyhow. You wash your face and you think it's clean, but it's not clean. All right? So the commandment is a guide or a standard for Christian living, and Christ gives us the strength so we can live according to his principle. All right? Um, permit me to just to just add. Mm -hmm. um, the person also asked about the, the false church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a church that is that is not teaching the word of God, mm -hmm. that is not being true to the word of God, that has teachings that are against the will of God, then that system cannot be the true church. Cannot be the church of the living God. The church of God has to be the church that teaches the word of God um, because Christ himself talks about if you hear his word and you are disobedient to it you are building on, on sinking sand um, on the other hand when you hear his word and you are faithful to his word you are really building on, on, on the rock remember Christ mm -hmm. is the rock that's, the where, we start, that's where we started eh? mm -hmm. so, so, so if you are building on the rock the true church of Christ has to be faithful to the word of God, must know the word of God, and That's must right. teach and practice the word of God. All right, sister, I wanted to read that scripture for us. Matthew chapter 7. And as Pastor Scott mentioned it, you know, sometimes people just say, you know, they're talking from the head. So let's see what the Bible says. Matthew chapter 7, and we will read from 21 to 25. Matthew 7. Yeah. 21 to 25. I'll read up to 27. 21 to 27. Mm -hmm. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, we have not, have we, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name. And then I will declare to them, 
I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Verse 24, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house. And it did not fall, mm -hmm. for it was founded on the rock. 26, But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the flood came, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. All right. So once you do not follow the principles and the teachings of Christ and what is in the Bible, you are building on sand. So it's not something that will stand up. And once you build on the rock, you are building on Christ. And even the Bible says that Christ is the foundation of the church. Mm -hmm. All right. And if you're not building on the teachings of Christ, then it's not God's church. So you need to bear that in mind, all right? And I, um, there, there's this notion today that a church is a church. Mm -hmm. we, we hear that ever so often, the person saying, as long as we are going to church, we are okay. So same God. Jesus, mm -hmm. he cannot be the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. He cannot. To say that a church is a church that teaches several things differently, it simply means that God doesn't know what he's about. There is a precise method and way that God wants us to function. And um, the people of God was called out to follow Jesus. We can follow Jesus um, all over the place. You going left and I'm going right. God has an order. Also to negate the fact that God has a church is to also negate that we have an adversary. Mm -hmm. We have an adversary who will be setting up counterfeits. And his responsibility, I believe he's working very hard to tie up this human race. And I think mankind in these last days ought to be very wise and careful that we are following the Bible and its biblical standard as it relates to church. And sometimes I tell persons, don't ask me which church to attend. I tell persons, go to scripture because scripture has all the answers. Scripture cannot lie. I might be biased by saying to you, go to a Seventh-day Adventist church. Mm -hmm. But you must prove the Seventh-day Adventist church against the scripture to ensure that what the Seventh-day Adventist church teaches, it is biblically based. Sure. Okay. Um, if you would indulge me. All right. Before um, you go ahead. Revelation chapter 12 verse 17, you, you made a reference to it. Mm -hmm. And, and um, for the reason that we have an adversary, because it speaks about the dragon who is mm -hmm. the devil. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus Christ is making it very clear what his church is like. And he's pointing out his church in a very, in a very precise way. That's right. The church of God in these last days, the Bible makes it very clear, keeps the commandments of God. The commandments of God. So, so God, God's church is not going to say it's okay to commit adultery. Mm -hmm. It's not going to say it's okay to steal. It's okay to be dishonest, to covet, to worship other gods, to bow down before images, even in a Christian church. Mm -hmm. um, to say that you know, it is okay to, to violate God's seventh-day Sabbath and choose an alternative day. God's church will keep his commandments. Not that the members are flawless. But the system promotes the truth of God because that's the foundation. Christ, who is the truth, he's the rock of the church. And then, of course, the testimony of Jesus Christ. The Bible explains that in Revelation 19 verse 10. Um, the testimony of Jesus Christ is a spirit of prophecy. So God's church is going to be faithful to the ministry of the prophets. Mm -hmm. Whatever God would have spoken in his word through the prophets, God's church is going to uphold that, is going to teach that. And is going to be faithful to that. So, so God, so God's church um, is very particular, and and so therefore um, we have to be very mindful um, of that. All right. So we'll take some comments after that. We'll take the special music. So, um, Pastor Philip is saying the true church is biblical based, and all these teachings can be there, can can has their foundation in the Word of God. All right. If a church is not faithful to all that the scripture says, then it disqualifies itself as a true church. Let's go down. Let's see what somebody comments. All right, let's go. All right. Okay. Shelly Lewis is saying, uh, Pastor Scott, read that for us. There is a text in the Bible that speaks to each man must work out his salvation with fear and trembling. I hope I quoted right. The question I'm asking. Why with fear and trembling? Can you expand on this? Alright, let's go down. 
Christmas, where we worship is the temple, our heart is the church. Mm -hmm. Interesting one. <laughs> you may want to go back there at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, the church, the church that keeps and teaches the commandments of God is the true church, Victor Barclay. Alright, good night, Joel. So definitely, he will use all methods to destroy or distort the work of God. And you're speaking about the adversary. Alright, Trisha said, yes, he can. That's why the Bible says, the wheat and the tear shall grow together. Victor is saying, Richard, not only can he plant, but has and is planting. Alright? So we now take the special music. When we come back, we will respond. We will respond to, to some of the, the comments. We, we hope that you really enjoyed that special music and we were reflecting on some of the questions that was asked and uh, we will venture to answer one right now Pastor Scott will address it yes the idea of, of the church you know um, is within the heart sometimes a lot of people make reference to this mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it's, it's really a case of saying that I do not have to assemble mm -hmm. right I can remain at home and I don't need to assemble but the Bible is very clear when it says in the New Testament, forsake not mm -hmm. the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Mm -hmm. No, we don't want to be part of the sum. Mm -hmm. As the Bible teaches us that the assembly is important. The church is the assembly. We are called out and we assemble as believers. We're part of an assembly of faith, an assembly of believers. So the Bible says, do not forsake that. Mm -hmm. So let's not... Um, uh, have the, no, I'm not suggesting that this is what the person commenting would have 
um, been indicating, but it's, it's important to make the point that the church of God, being part of the church, coming together to worship um, in his house, in his temple, that is critically um, important. So let's not um, have the idea that we can simply remain at home in isolation, True. Um, but we must assemble with the believers. And if Christ has established the church, um, how could I say that I'm a Christian and I'm rejecting that assembly? Right. When Christ is the one, I'm supposed to be a follower of Christ. Right. You know. All right. So um, we thank you for all the questions that you're asking. And keep asking your question. Remember to like and share the page. But during the week, we have met some people on the streets of Greenville. And, um, well, for those of you not in Grenada, that's one of the, the, um, the tongue. That one of the tongue of the parish of St. Um, and the parish of St. Andrews. And we asked them some questions and they responded. So we'll just go now to the street talk and let's listen to what they had to say. Is it really a building or is it a group of people? We'll find out on this week's street talk. I'm your host, Zolisha, and we're out in the streets of Grenville. Let's go. Hi. So, do you go to church? Yes, I do. Okay. Why? You have any special reason? I go to church because. I feel like going to church is something necessary in life, like a must praise God or something. Like, you know, I don't really know how to explain it, but I feel like going to church brings you closer to God. And So you think there is a need to go to church? Yes. As you said in the Bible, where two and three are gathered in His name, and I'm in the midst of life. Wonderful. Do you believe that all churches are from God or are some of the devil? To be honest, I don't really know because... What people must be saying is everybody has their belief and that everybody serves the same God but in their own way. So I can say that some churches are of the devil. And okay. So do you think you must go to church to be saved? Mm -hmm. I've said before it's a necessity, but honestly i don't really think you need to go to church to be saved you could be close to god in your heart and have him there pray to him every morning and praise him and live a good life and that is what gets you saved okay nice um another question what are some of your concerns with churches today you know a lot of different churches a lot of things go on how do you feel about it not everything we know today is right with some churches um so, what are your concerns? My concern is that people see different religions. Like, let's say for Adventists, people condemn Adventists, they say, because they practice things in the wrong way or other religions do things in the wrong way. And that is a problem to me because they say we serve the same God. So, what is it condemning your people and them in their way, con praising God? Okay, and last question. What would you like to see happening in churches today? I gotta say unity. Well, unity because most people in the church and then you see, oh, this one was talking to this one and then this one was talking to this one and then that is not something good that's supposed to be in the church. Like everybody's supposed to be together and bonded as a family. Okay, thank you so much. What's the name? Avian. Nice to meet you. Do you go to church? Yes, that's one. Why do you go to church? Because I go to go to church because of my religion and to serve God. Now, what would you say is a church? I don't know. Church is a building and an organization. That's all. Do you believe there is one true church? Yes. Yet it. Yet is it one true church because God said that. The true church is the Ramdan church, and that was resonate from Ellen G. White. Okay, so if you are a pastor, imagine that you are a pastor. How would you run your church? Well, fear enough to win souls for Christ. Okay, nice. Are all churches of God, or do you believe some are from the devil? Yeah, it is true. Some people believe in God, some don't, and some say they believe in the devil. Okay, nice. Now, do you believe that you must go to church to be saved? No, you don't must go to church to be saved. Once you're doing what is right and pleasing in God's sight. Okay, now 
can you tell me why do you think there are so many churches today? So many churches, you know, you go here, there, everywhere, so many churches. Why? The reason why you have so many churches today because certain people do it as a contract of a business and and to also facilitate other people and to earn some sorts of living. Okay. Oh, now, what are your some of your concerns when it comes to churches today? You know, we hear so many different things happen in different churches. What are your concerns about that? Yeah, when I hear things, so, you know, I even ask myself why, why people think that way. And because, for instance, some people say, when things like that happen, you just have to pray and hope that things will happen for the better. Now, last question. What would you like to see happening in churches today? Uh, to me, I find they uh, spend some more time with the youths and, and settle down with, with them also. Like, like even those who just recently baptized. They, when I speak with some of them, they tell me the reason why they leave church because nobody didn't speak in with them, nobody been talking with them and they didn't get no activities to do. So they sit down in church and they say like they one bench and then after a time they leave church so all right that's it okay thank you so much Everything. okay right yeah. no questions and answers you know, as you know. Yes. <laughs> small man you want to come and answer a question all right okay ready yeah okay so do you go to church no not really you know. is there a special reason why uh well i've been in well, i was a catholic since i grew up you know but I just feel, well, church is just like a building. Okay. You know, church is like a building to me, you know. People congregate on a Sunday. It's nice to be together with everybody, you know, but I don't, I don't really go to church. Okay. Do you think that there is a reason or a purpose for having churches these days? Well, they say the reason for having churches is to get the people together, you know. That's mainly the way they have in churches. Because you have different religion. Right. I don't know if church and religion is the same thing. Because there is churches and there is religion. Right. So we have to which one is which one we're talking about. Okay, so do you believe that there is one true church? You know, probably we have different religion, yes, and mm -hmm. persons may say that their church is a true yeah. church. Yeah. Do you believe that there is one true church? Well, I wouldn't believe there is a one true church. In. I wouldn't believe that. I don't believe there is one there is true, any true church. Because everybody read the Bible as I as I say. And everybody taught the Bible differently. The interpretation of the Bible what is different. Okay. So if you are a pastor, how would you run your church? Well, if I am a pastor, I, I wouldn't really have a church, you know. And if I have but a... But you're the a pastor. pastor. If I have a building. Okay. So I'll move on to the next question. Yes, yes, yes. Are all churches from God or do you think that some are from the devil? Based on what's happening in the world today. Based on what happens today, I say our church is from God, you know. God is a man who creates everything. But it's how you run your church and how you run the, the, the religion is how you run your church. Because some people run church differently. Some people run church to make money. Some people just run church well as a, people congregate together and praise the Lord as they stay together. Which is good. Do you think you must go to church to be saved? No, you don't have to be in church to be saved. I don't think so. Because sometimes you go to church and you're not saved and you're not doing the right thing. You know? True. Okay, so why do you think that there are so many churches today? So many churches today. Why? I think why so many churches because it's a, it's a money-making thing as far as I see right now. Because people build church to make money. And God said the word have to preach for free. Okay. And if you have to preach the word for free, then you go get a job. And if you want people together to study the Bible together as one, then you have people on a Sunday, on a Saturday, or Tuesday, or Wednesday, any day of the week, to get together and congregate and praise the Lord. Okay, so you would say that one of your concerns about churches today is that it seems like a business. It seems like a business. To me, it seems like a business. I know for other people. Because you have to pay tithe. They say that this one is for the priest, this one is for the pastor, this one is for God. Okay. So, <laughs> what would you like to see happening in churches? We know that there are some things that are going on in churches that are not right. But what betterment would you like to see happening? Well, I don't know what to talk about betterment in church, you know, because as far as I see, you go to church on a Sunday, is to praise the Lord. So I don't see much, like I say, well, as you tell me about, as you ask me the question about what I see about church. As I say, church is a money-making thing. Okay. 
That is the only thing I go talk about. It's a money making something. So if I want to make money, I open my church and the people will come and then they have to pay. On a Sunday, you have to pay tithes and offering, as they say. Nobody knows what they do with tithes and offering. Maybe you should ask them one day. At the end of the day, the city pastor, the best house, the best car, the best wife is he. At the end of the day, that's, that's what's happening. So I see church as a money-making thing. That is my opinion. Church as a money-making thing. Okay. Thank you so much What's for answering. No problem. No problem. What's your name? Edmond Brown. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So do you go to church? Yes. Why, uh, why do you go to church? Because I believe not forsaking the assembly of yourself, and as we see the days approaching, and the wickedness, all the prophecy, modern event is made clear by vindicated prophecy. So all the scripture that was prophesied concerning this age, this generation, we see it coming to pass. Nice. Uh, can you explain to me, in your idea, what you think a church is? Well, for me, my first experience of church is, it means ecclesiastic, which is called out. You separate it from the world, like Israel was called out of Egypt into the promised land, which was Canaan. Very nice. Another question, what is the purpose of a church? Well, for me, church is where the Christian from the New Testament, where we read from Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, where we come over into the, um, the Apostle, which is the book of Acts, where we see the Peter, James and John them. These were the disciples who walked with Jesus, and we see how they were carrying. They didn't have an organization, but they, they were the church of that day. They didn't put on a building and call it church because they were the Holy Ghost filled church in that day. No more a temple because Jesus said, I will break down this temple and rebuild it in three days. So they were the tabernacle that Jesus himself dwell in now. Okay, wonderful. Now, do you believe that there is one true church? The Church of Jesus Christ, which is the Holy Ghost filled people, I believe that. Not a name. It's sons and daughters of God. A people who God will come back for in the last day. But in all of that, I believe personally it's category of election. So it's not within me to condemn or judge anyone. Because we know the white throne judgment is coming. Where God will separate the sheep from the goat. Where we'll do a total separation. We read in the book of Revelation about souls that are under the altar. We read also concerning how God will deal with the Jews and the Gentiles. Okay, wonderful. Now, if you were a pastor, how would you run your church? Uh, that's a very intrigued question. I really like it. Um, definitely, to be a pastor, you have to call. You have to be sent from God. So, if, if I meet God, you, you, because you cannot go to a, a Bible school to be a pastor. A pastor is one who was sent from the presence of God. He knows his calling, God is calling, his commission. And you, you, why is your call and your send? Then God is going with you. You is not alone. Okay. Now, are all churches of God or do you think some are probably of the devil? Mm, another intrigued question. I believe all church have truth. They may not have 100% truth, but every churches have their truth. Now, what you will find there is that God is 100% truth. And as long as you are saying the fullness of God, then you are also perverted. So there where the tickle is coming. Okay. And do you think, do you believe that you must go to church to be saved? No, I don't believe you must go to church to be saved. But remind you, church is a place where that's where the gospel has been preached. That's where the truth is become preached. The Bible declares, how can you preach except you be sent? How can you hear unless there's not a preacher? So definitely, you know, the God who is all creator, El Elohim, the self-existing God, who today where we worship and praise as Jesus Christ. I believe he will never leave the world without a provided place of worship so we we you must have provided place of worship okay um i'll ask you this other question why are there so many churches today right a next sweet question i like that it's very simple matthew 24 in the last days, we'll have many false Christs. If it were possible, the very elect would be deceived. Definitely, Satan is the same old devil. He cannot change. He's known by his characteristic, just like oh God is known by his characteristic. Now, Satan, what he do? He pervert everything. Every, he's not a creator, so he pervert everything. 
this church will have truth and before you know the pastor died because you think about the war the I will go back to the, the Lateran Revival. The Lateran Revival start in 1946. And after the Lateran Revival, by 1965, there was chaos on the earth. We know about the Pentecostal, the true Pentecostal will start in 1906. By 1914, we have World War I. 1939, we have World War II. Then we have Hitler, Eichmann, Mussolini. We watch the Jews that got to persecution. For 900 years, the church itself got to a dark ages. So when we look at this dispensation, which is the Laodicea dispensation, now what you have to know where can you find truth where can you embrace truth where can as somebody who's searching for God like David said in Psalms 42 deep call it unto deep as the water broke so there's that thirst in every elect of God every born-again believer to find God okay our last question what would you like to see happening in churches today we know that you know some people are concerned pastors do crazy things What's your take on it? What would you like to see really happening in churches today? Right. In, in churches today, I would refer back as the same thing again. It, the Bible is clear. The, the Bible is the, the most perfectest book I ever read. There's not a Bible, there's not a book on the earth like the Bible. Now what you will see, there's so many things that as re, the, the churches and them, they are, not, they are not using the Bible to govern everything. The Bible is the masterpiece. The Bible is that book where every pastor, every teacher, every doesn't matter from the lady in the church to the lowest member if your life is beyond the word then you have a perfect church but as long as the pastor and them ain't using the fullness of the word that is the chaos in the church today the word of god is not used as it's supposed to the word of god is the absolute is the masterpiece the word of god is god in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word is god when you remove god, the word from the church you remove god so what you have marks you have morgues, you have hospital, you have dead house. The church need to go back to the word and it's too late. It's too late. The coming of the Lord is at hand. Time is running out. The man, everything is prophesying, showing you. It's time. It's, it's home time. The world is in chaos. The earth is in birth pain. Well, thank you so much for sharing. What's your name? Winston Lewis. Okay, and that's your little shop here? Yes, Caribbean Fireside, where the fire cannot hide. It's a place where we say everything proper. Right? Very nice. Yes. All right, um, well, this was our street talk. Um, I really enjoyed the street talk. I, I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed it. And um, it's interesting sometimes to get the views from people and um, how they view church and the, the thoughts and, sorry, and so on. There are some people who are very knowledgeable. There are some people who are honest and ignorant. But um, in all and in all, it's important that people express themselves and as a result of that, you can know the thinking. And if you are knowledgeable, then you can guide them. And um, we can all come in harmony to what God expects of us. All right, so there are a lot of comments that came in. Um, we will try to take what? some of them. Right. Right, so Dr. Philip, Sister wanted to read that first, A church can be filled with people but still be empty if their lives are devoid of the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. It is the presence of the Holy Spirit in the lives of the members that qualifies them as his saved community. Without the recognition that, without the recognition that obedience is always prompted and occasioned by the Holy Spirit, church can become an arena of self-righteous, pious members. Mm -hmm. All right, so, Sister Paris, Pastor Peter's read for us. She says, we as Adventists have to be very careful thinking and keeping the Sabbath is all. Keeping the Sabbath is not all. He said, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. That means looking after the poor, the homeless, etc. Alright. Alright. Pastor Scott? Alright, Grislin. Um, she made a reference to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But he had chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The stress word here is peculiar. God calls us a peculiar people. Peculiar means that you don't just do what you feel. You have to follow a set value, set values, and without those values, you cannot be called peculiar. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, Shelley Louis says, 
There are instances of persons going to church, participating in our church activities, trying to do, be good because of fear of hell and being lost, uh, e being lost uh, even of bad things happening to them. Or if they go to church, you will get blessing all the time. How do one respond to this? Coming back to fear and trembling. <laughs> So what you feel, Andrew? All right, Mira Malich, my cousin in the U.S., she says, yes, some churches really do. It's all about money. All right? Okay, let's go, let's go. All right? Um, Christopher Gomez. That's not like a Colombia surname. Yeah. Yeah. Spanish. Yes. Um, Pastor Peter, read that for us. The coming together of believers is encouraged to strengthen, support, correct, and teach those that may be in errors. That are seeking truth even as it says in second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that a man of god may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works i think that's a very <coughs> profound point yeah, yeah. yeah all right okay they're referring to the street talk they say he's pastor material he should be a preacher who oh, is a pastor even brother Thus for righteousness and truth, well saying, young man, this young man start to preach there, amen, brother, very true brother, all right, okay, good, all right, so we're coming down the road now, um, so, well, based on what was said in the street talk, there is also that question here, is it necessary to go to church, what do you think? And those who are viewing you, you are not part of the street talk and you want to express your, your opinion or your thoughts, is it necessary to go to church? While it probably might be true uh, that the church can't save any, any, any individual, the church is the medium for salvation. Mm -hmm. Jesus would have established the church for salvation. He calls individuals and then he expands us back into the community to win individuals unto himself. So we can't say that the church is our heart or we don't must go to church. Jesus established the church for us to commune and to worship him. So this is the medium of salvation unless we want to reject it and say, well, Jesus did my heart and I don't have to go anywhere else. That's, that's ignorance. All right, Sister Aviane is responding to Sister Shelley. Let me hear what she said. The text is often misused to instill fear into people. However, the sense of working out our salvation in fear and trembling is twofold, I believe. Work out means to continually work to bring something to completion. We do this by actively pursuing obedience in the presence of sanctification. The trembling is the attitude towards Christian are to heart are to have in pursuing the goal pursuing the goal of healthy fear of offending God through disobedience and awe and respect to his majesty and holiness. Trembling to me is a shaking due to weakness, but this is a weakness of higher purpose. I stand corrected. Alright, and I think it's, it's well in place and in the context and everything. Um, can when you say fear and trembling is not to be afraid, but the same fear that the Bible makes reference to in Hebrews um, chapter 11 and I think verse 7, I'm not sure about the verse, where he said that and, um, Noah feared God and he, he moved with fear and do what God tell him to do. Not because he was afraid of God, but because he had the level of respect and reverence for God. Even though he had never experienced rain before, he believed that what God said would come to pass and that's why he, he did what he did. So this is why we have to move in the way we should with our Christian experience to work it out because we have respect and reverence for God. All right? Nico but George says... Not, not, not just in that, in, in that vein, there's another swing to it. If we look at the text carefully, mm -hmm. I, it's an idiom that has been used here. And I don't think um, God is telling us that we must be frightened mm -hmm. to worship it. There's a call for, for us to take stock as to where we are. We need to be cognizant of the fact that Jesus saves. And the devil is seeking to get us as much as possible. So I think the apostle, the apostle is calling our attention here to understand the emergency of serving Jesus. Mm -hmm. It is a call where we must be within our hearts cognizant of the fact that Jesus saves, he establishes the order of salvation, and we must seek it earnestly. But it's not that we must be frightened to worship God and something is going to happen to us. Mm -hmm. um, so Sister Shelley, it's a call here, and, it's a, and, I, and I like the point that you're raising, it's a call here, a call of emergency, that those of us who attend church, must understand that we are not just going to church for the ritual, but we are going to church for the sole purpose of worshiping Jesus. Yes. All right. And just to add, um, we said that the church, they're the called out people. And I think oft oftentimes, uh, many persons think that the call is just a one time. 
you hear the call of God and you accept him, you go to, you baptize and then you start to go to church and you go through the, 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 the rituals of, of attending church and the different services. But I firmly believe that the call, it's, it's every day. With every decision, God calls us out from the way of the world and the things of unrighteousness to walk in the way that he calls us or, or the way that he wants us to, to, to go. And I think um, he's in the text that Sister Shelley is, is mentioning, it, it helps us to recognize that yes, salvation is free, but we have a part to play. That's right. We have to unite our will with Christ so that we can be able to experience the abundant life that he's promised us here on earth and then the abundant life that he's promised us in eternity. So in terms of working out our salvation, so to speak, we have a part to play. We don't just say, yes, I'm going to follow Jesus right. and relax and do whatever we want to do. There is a decision that we have to make with every choice that is presented before us so that we can choose the way of salvation as a spirit leads. All right, so we want, we, want to, we want to move on. I want to ask a very interesting question. Right, um, we, we'll deal with what, what are the functions of the church? Why was the church established? Because churches today have plenty, plenty things happening. Sometimes you see things on the internet. Sometimes you, you go places and you hear people talking about things that pastors are, are doing to them, to their members, are allowing the members to do. And, and because, for example, before, before you all respond, I was at the gym and the guys and them were saying that um, the, you have a pastor, he's bathing in the water and the members are drinking the water. You know, like in a drum or something. Mm. And, and, and those people are, are, sometimes you hear people do things and you want to know if those things are really true. There's a pastor who told his members, if you want to receive the Holy Spirit, go outside and eat grass. And the members went outside and they were eating grass. Um, one told the members that if you want to receive the Holy, Holy Spirit, when you come to church, you ladies don't wear any underclothes. And they came to church like that. You know, say so a lot of things are happening. So I want to ask the question, what really is the function of the church today? And online viewers, you can respond as well. I, I want to give a, a Bible text um, in relation to the function. Of course, there are other functions beyond um, mm -hmm. what I'm going to read. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 4, um, from verse 12, the Bible says, in relation to the church, he gives the different leaders, different officers of the church, mm -hmm. and, and says, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry. The word perfecting there is an old English word for equipping. Mm -hmm. So one of the reasons for the existence of the church is also to help equip and empower um, its members to do ministry for the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so every member should be involved in, in ministry. Then apart from that empowering or training, um, the Bible says for the edifying of the body of Christ. So one of the functions of the church is to edify its members so that we'll understand the will of God for our lives. We'll understand the way we should live our lives in order to please God. Because, you know, you don't want to just accept Christ and not know how to please him. Sure. You accept Christ and you must understand how to please him. And so that's one of the functions of the church, to edify, to educate um, its members, not just being emotional, but it's also edifying the body of Christ. And then it tells us the purpose, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the marriage of the statue of Christ. So the church is to help us to become more like Christ. And, and so, in light of these functions, it makes um, being members of the church um, an imperative. Um, it cannot be a case where I may, I may not. Um, yes, the church cannot save you, but when you consider the function of the church, it is a must for us as believers right. to be part of the church of God. Of God. Amen. All right, anyone on this? Yeah, I'm, I'm the function of the church. What do you think of the function of the church today? I remember Pastor Jacket, Jacket at school. You know, in doing that course with him, and he said the church has two primary functions. And that is, well, he gives us the two forces. He called it centripetal, centripetal and centrifugal. God calls us. We gather as believers. And God gives us the commission to go and expand. And we see that in Matthew 20, 18 to 20. Go in there for and preach the gospel. The church's primary function is to do mission. Whenever we cease from doing mission, the church suffers. Sure. We are here to one individual of the impending doom, and also to tell them that there is salvation available through Jesus Christ. So whenever the church loses sight of his, sight of his mission, mm -hmm. the church will go into a dark hole. Therefore, the primary function of the church is to ensure God guides us and to ensure that we go where he's asking us to go. 
All right. So let's look at some of the comments. Let's go back up and take some of the comments from our viewers online. Um, says what the purpose of the church. Church cannot save us. Church cannot save us, but we go to church because we are saved so that we can fellowship and strengthen each other. That's right. right? Shelly say yes, a lot of false churches, leaders misleading people. All right, Nikisha Alexander say the church, the synagogue at the time came into existence to bring us closer in spirit to worship and bring glory to his name and in turn bring others closer to him. All right, Chrissy Sylvester is saying for fellowship and ministry. ministry right? And that ministry involves mission. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yes, yeah. That's right. Shaman says, go, up, go, up, go back up, go back up. All right, says, Sabi Sabbath, everyone from Tox and Caicos Island. Now let's go. All right, um, Gertrude says, the church is a hospital for the spiritually sick. That is right. The leaders are expected to educate its members to be Christ like. To be Christ -like. All right, <coughs> Anderson Felix. Next way. Oh, oh, next way, next way. Go down, go down. Right, um, right. He says, but you are a chosen generation. We read that text already. Mm -hmm. We are called so we can call. All right. So we are called so we can call. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we do the last question and then we wrap up. The question is for the online viewers and as members of a church, a Seventh-day Adventist church, what are some of your concerns with the church today? What are some of your concerns? Maybe if you had an older person here, they will start talking already. <laughs> they will say how it was before and how it is now is different. Go ahead. If I'm, well, let me start so the last cut problem and finish. The church to me, one of the concerns that I have as it relates to the church is that the church to me is losing its identity. Um, we are living in a pluralistic society and the church seems to be grappling with the idea of pluralism and, and even bringing it as far as in the church. We, we are losing our mission. We have the gospel to preach and I, I believe um, sometimes we shy away from the gospel that we ought to preach because we are fearful as to who we might offend. While we have to be, ought to be careful as to how we present the gospel, the gospel is there to preach. Because when we look at the history of the church, it is that straight testimony that brings individuals to Jesus. It was never bent to meet them. Once we bend it, they come and bend and you can't straighten them when they come in. We have to give individuals a straight testimony in love. Our methods, of course, we need to correct our methods. So that's, that's one of the struggles as a young pastor that I'm seeing in the church, that we need to go back to primitive godliness. Primitive godliness. And if I'm speaking to the Seventh-day Adventists now, gone are the days when we hear Sabbath worship songs emanating from homes when the sun is about to set. Gone are the days. Um, gone are the days where individuals would have prepared everything before Sabbath, for Sabbath. Mm -hmm. um, so we need to get back to that primitive godliness. And I think if only we allow Jesus to do that, then we will recognize that him alone can do it and change us. Sure. All right. Pastor Scott? Yes. Your concern to me? Yes. Um, for oh, and before you speak, online viewers, we're asking you, um, probably you, you do not go to church or you go to a particular church. What is your concern? What is the concern you have with church today? And this is our last question, so seize that opportunity to send in your response. Yes, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian because I fully believe that the church teaches the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So I'm 100% convinced um, about that. Um, however, my concern for the church is that th the church is in great need of spiritual revival yeah. and reformation. And, and if we can only get our spirituality where it is supposed to be in terms of our connection with God, of course, these things are fostered through prayer, devotion, worship, meditation, if we can get it right in terms of allowing the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, because only the Holy Spirit can do that, mm -hmm. to revive us, then the church can be reformed and our members can live lives that are more like Christ. Mm -hmm. And so that's my great concern for the church. Our, our spirituality um, should really be revived. Amen. 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 Um, similar to the two pastors, um, Sometimes I, I reflect on it, I even reflect on my own self and like, especially Saturday, Saturday morning when you're getting all decked out to go to church, you know. Um, it's, and to some extent it's becoming a ritual, you see it sometimes. Um, you go to church, but I think we should, we should ask ourselves the question, why am I going? What is it that you're going to church to do? And I think that there is a, as Pastor said, there's a crisis with identity, I want to say, in terms of purpose. I think um, because we've become so caught up with life and 
earning a living and other things of course we know the enemy is there we've lost our purpose or we are um, maybe losing our purpose in terms of why are we going to church is it that you're going to be entertained meet with your friends or, or is it that you're going to be built up and, and um, equipped as pastors say to then go out and do what it is that God has called us to do so I think that it all comes down to each member's personal relationship with God That's right. and of course we know the wheat and the tears must go together but um, as the Bible says we need to examine ourselves and see where we are with God why is it that we're doing these things is it just because of a ritual or is it because that we know that we're going to the, there to be nourished up and also to nourish up others so that we can be totally equipped to do what God has called us to do and also to be ready to live in the presence of a holy God. Amen. All right, so we're asking you now to send in your prayer request because we will read the comments on the screen and after that we will go to our prayer session as we get ready to close. All right, so just go up, let's take some of the comments on the screen. All right, some of the concerns that the brethren and the viewers have with the church, right? Okay, we start from there. Christopher Gomez says, The church is to be considered a family that love each other and God. And as with any relationship, spending time nurtures and grows love. And it's the same thing that is needed with the family of God. For the purpose of caring for, guiding to, and loving each other, and being a reflection of Christ to the world. Alright, let's go down the road. Alright. Alright, Nikisha said, The church to me has... Being losing its purpose, we are called to preach, to help the poor, needy, and sick, less fortunate community service. We have a mission. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go down the road. Many members are trying to integrate the world into the churches. A lot of them are trying to be a Christian on Sabbath, but forget the rest of the week. All right? We need the old-time religion, primitive godliness, as Pastor mentioned. Love, unity, and continuous Christ-like behavior. Too much compromise in the church today from top to bottom. <laughs> Richard Deckel says, I would like to see the pastors go out and look for the members. Yes. All right. Sam Metali said, we are compromising too much in order to keep the young people. Let's get back to the whole time religion, music, jazz, etc. All right. So when the end says, so true, pastor, the church should quote God's word and bend to accommodate the youth. And God said he change not also they're not studying the prophecy as need to thank for the lesson we are this quarter all right okay let me see that's the last one i'll read um chair sinaki saying i believe we need to move away <coughs> sorry from being called the organization with so many offices that we have missed the mark and missed what we are called to do all right okay so we have some of the all right, Sister, Sister Peter says, Satania says, mission, mission, mission. That's what the church is called to do. We, are, we have to go back to Christ's method alone, meeting people where they are, seeking them in the comfort zone and presenting Christ to them. Amen. Amen. All right, Christopher Gomez said, the church has lost its true love for God. We need, to, we need to love as God loved to be that light, reflection of him in the world, in darkness. God is love, so we need to love selfless. All right? Okay, and Sister Mason says to me, I believe the church have been too compromising. Okay, so at this point we will go to our, our prayer session. Um, you know that there are different people out there with different needs and they want um, God to do something for them. So we really want to pray for the individuals. So if you have any special requests, you can send it in. Alright, I will have Pastor Scott and Sister I want to do a special prayer for everyone because no request is coming in. So Pastor Scott and Sister Olive. At this moment, awesome Father, what a wonderful privilege to call upon your mighty name. We thank you for this privilege of prayer. We thank you that we can be together in unity as believers here and even those who have been viewing and listening. We pray God in heaven for all of our different concerns. You said in your words that if we delight ourselves in you, you will grant us the desires of our hearts. So whatever our hearts desires may be that are in harmony with your will, we pray, God, that you please accomplish in our lives. Wherever we need your help, your blessing, we pray that you grant us such favors. There are persons who have been viewing who are in need of healing. We pray that you stretch forth your mighty hand and heal. 
some might need financial blessing. We pray that you open the windows of heaven and provide, yes. provide job, provide finance, Father. <laughs> there are those who need mending in relationships. We pray that you allow reconciliation to take place at home, at work, and at other, in other cases where such would be needed. We pray, Father in heaven, that you meet all of our needs. But as you meet those needs, God, we ask that we respond to your goodness by being faithful to you by living our lives in harmony with your will. We pray, God, that all of us will abide under thy grace so that when Jesus returns, he can save us into his kingdom. Mm -hmm. God, your word shows us that you died for your church mm -hmm. and you are willing, Father, to return to save all the members of your church who mm -hmm. have been surrendered to you. So may all of us who belong to your church, Father, not just be there as a mere form and formality, but may we be fully surrendered to you. Yes. May we experience the revival we need so that when Jesus comes again, indeed by his grace and his grace alone, we can make it to your kingdom. Bless us to this end, we pray in the mighty name of Christ. Amen. Dear God, we continue to linger before your throne, thanking you, dear God, for inviting us to bring our wants, our needs, our joys, our concerns, and everything before you. Amen. We know you never get tired of hearing us. In fact, dear God, you've invited us to come boldly, dear God, and make our requests known. And tonight we come to you believing that you hear and answer the prayers of your people. Amen. Tonight, dear God, we thank you for the church. We thank Amen. you, dear God, for this medium that you have provided for the salvation of men. Yes, we Amen. thank you, dear God, for calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And you haven't just called us once, but every day, dear God, you keep calling us into a closer and a closer relationship with you. We know, dear God, there is nothing good within us, but because of your love for us, you call us to yourself. Amen. And Lord, even though we are thankful for the call, and we pray that you'll forgive us for the ways in which we would have misrepresented you or dishonored you, dear God. Tonight, in a special way, I present before you those who are looking for the true church, dear God, those who are looking for a true relationship with you, dear God. For those who have lost their purpose and their mission, dear God, we come before you asking that you will indeed provide your Holy Spirit <clears throat> in marked amongst, dear God, so that we can all have a clear understanding of who you are and who you've called us to be, dear God. We pray, dear Father, that you will help us to spend time in your word and prayer. Amen. We pray, dear God, that you will fill us with your spirit so that we can do the work that you have called us to do, dear Father. We are the call because you want us to call others, dear Father. And in ways in which we would have forgotten our mission, dear God, or put it aside for other purposes, we pray that you will forgive us and that you will help us, dear God, by your grace to do the things that you've called us to do. Remember those who are sick, even now, dear God, whether physically or spiritually or mentally, we pray that you will apply your hands of healing, even now. Be with families who may be experiencing crisis, dear God. Be with those who are hurt, dear Father. Be with those who are hungry, dear God. And as we prepare to fellowship tomorrow, dear God, in your sanctuary, we pray that your Holy Spirit will indeed be poured out and marked amongst so that we can indeed have a wonderful time in your presence and be equipped to go out and to tell others of your wonderful love. Amen. We give you praise and thanks for this ministry. Continue to bless it that it may reach souls. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I will thank you for viewing. I will look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you. Happy Sabbath and have a wonderful weekend and be safe. Amen. Isn't some promotions?